who was my best friend at the time, and he really explained to me about who Jesus was and the things that he did and miracles that he did, which is also in the Quran. He also said to me that if you don't receive Christ as your savior, just put it bluntly, he just said you will go to hell. And this is something I never heard of. And my initial reaction was rage. I really went after my best friend and I couldn't believe I was actually doing this. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of A Muslim Journey to Hope. I'm your host, Naeem. On this program, we feature true stories of Muslim men and women who have set out on a spiritual journey which has led them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Our guests share their lives with us uh, with sincere hearts, and not only of how God turned their lives around, but we learn some valuable principles as well. And today's program is no different. In a minute, you'll meet a young Muslim man from the Middle East named Imra. Imra was raised a Muslim, and he shares how angry he became when his spiritual identity was challenged. After we hear from Imra, we'll take a look at this very important issue, overcoming anger. Now let's hear from Imra. Well, I was um, a young young boy, and just growing up in a Muslim home, I, uh, you know, to, to be a Muslim, you also were Turkish. So being Turkish was also a Muslim, and for me, that really meant uh, family. Uh, it meant fear of God. It meant fear of my father, and to me, it was just a, a religion motivated by fear, and uh, and also respect and honor. Which, uh, which we really valued in our home. Allah to me was a, f I can't say a father, but a force who was really ready to uh, hurt me if I didn't do the right thing. Who was really ready to raise his hand and strike me if I wasn't in line with the commandments or in line with uh, what Islam would teach. I definitely believed in Allah, and most of my uh, teaching came from my mother. And uh, she was the one who had the Quran, and she would, you know, if we were caught lying, she would make us swear and put her hand on top of the Quran. And, you know, that was all fearful for me, too, because I knew if I said the wrong thing, something bad was going to happen to me. So that, that was a real main part of what being a Muslim was in my household. My parents sent me to Catholic school, and the only reason is because they saw the the uh, corruption or the the bad behavior that was in the public schools, which is still around today. And they, they did notice some kind of uh, strict regimen in the Catholic schools, and that's where they ended up sending me. And that's where my first exposure to Christ was. And I really just built, developed a curiosity for Christ. My second exposure to Jesus was through two of my best friends. Uh, they started to share with me about Jesus and who he was, and they were Catholics at the time. Um, and one of them really left an impression on me, and he was my best friend at the time. And he really explained to me about who Jesus was and the things that he did and miracles that he did, was, which is also in the Quran, being born of a virgin and all that, a lot of similarities. But I really believed that he had the whole story. And he also said to me that if you don't receive Christ as your savior, just put it bluntly, he just said, you will go to hell. And this is something I never heard of uh, because I thought I was already on my way to heaven because of, of appeasing Allah in some way, he would have mercy on me. It wasn't uh, security, but the way he explained it to me, there was security in Christ. And my initial reaction was rage. I really went after my best friend and I couldn't believe I was actually doing this. We were on a construction job. I went after him physically 
uh, verbally first, and he just wouldn't be quiet. And then people actually had to get between us to break us up, and the rage just built up, but mainly because I think for me, I was being told I was wrong. And I think a lot of that was ingrained because of the religion of Islam. It's a very aggressive religion. Um, and I'm not saying we're all aggressive or we're all aggressive as Muslims, but we are taught to retaliate. And, and that's what I did. And not even knowing that it was so ingrained in me. Um, and I couldn't believe I was actually retaliating against my best friend. And that to me says the opposition that I had in my heart because of Islam, that we are taught that everybody else is the infidel. And that was my really initial reaction. And because of my own issues that I had, uh, because of the way I was raised and because of having a very strict father, and it developed a lot of rage and anger inside of me. And some of that was directed towards God too. And now I hear that I'm wrong about something and I was the last person that you would say I was wrong um, because of uh, just the way I was and just of, just the maybe the the anger that I had towards my father and God just directing it towards other people. So after me and my friend were co continuously arguing and I, but I finally just said to him, listen, we really need to step back. It's getting between our friendship and he agreed to do that. But the one thing he did say to me that really stuck out in my mind was, which I never heard before because of religion, uh, he said to me, I'm only saying this to you because I love you and God loves you and he doesn't want to see you go to hell. And that's what really I think planted a seed in my heart, something I never heard before, that the love of God is what really draws us to Him and that's what really made an impact on me and later I started to question even more. Now now that I'm seeing the love rather than the aggression uh, this is what I was responding to. So what I did was in my mind I started questioning myself who this Jesus person really is. I mean I heard that he can through so many people who um, whether it's on TV or whatever so many people who were saying that this Jesus can change your heart, you could change your life, and all this other, you know, all these other things that can help you uh, just get through life. But I think there was more than that, and that's what I needed. I mean, I grew up because of what I went through as a child, um, depressed, angry, lost, and I knew all that, and all this was building up inside of me. And once I heard about the love of God, that's when things started to change in my heart. I was hearing the Bible through my friend and he was just reciting verses and he was uh, just explaining things that Jesus said about him, him being the truth and the life and that's really what uh, was drawing me to him. I was hearing his words through his servant and that, that's what I would say uh, started to bring me to that point where uh, I believe God's spirit was working in my heart. He was meeting me where I was at. So what I did one day, just out of a pure miracle, I believe, is just I got on my knees one day. I said, okay, and this is exactly what I said. Jesus, if you are real, and if you can really change hearts the way people say you can, you can really change my life, I want you to do this. And I'm on my knees actually asking to receive Jesus Christ. And, and I... And I really was, was drawn to him so much, and I couldn't resist him. And it wasn't because he was aggressive, it wasn't because he was uh, coming after me with, with a holy stick ready to beat me. It was really, I felt his love. So I got on my knees and I said, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to really do this. I can't believe I'm doing this because I am a Muslim. And what's that going to mean for me? Does that mean I have to change my ways? Does that mean I have to change my, you know, my family? Am I going to be rejected? But it didn't really matter to me at that point. Once I said the words, not only the words, but once I really spoke it from my heart for Jesus to come into my life, I knew this was the truth. And th this is what drew me to him, was the truth. I was seeking for truth. I didn't have any truth in my life. I grew up with lies. I grew up with deception. And here's the one person that allowed me to come to him. And, and I really remember, almost not, not audibly, but just in my heart, <clears throat> he was just saying to me, this is the truth, I am the truth. 
And I knew after I said those words, after I came up onto my feet, I knew I did the right thing. After I received Christ, everybody was rejoicing. And later on, I found out that so many people were praying for me to receive Christ, and, and I did. This is a concept I never had. I, I never knew that people actually would pray for you uh, like this. Um, and they did. And, and because of that, I believe God drew me to Him. But the one thing that I remember when I start to pick up the Bible and read it, um, and my first Bible was an NIV uh, study Bible, and it just really explained to you uh, in the subtext what was really happening, uh, if you couldn't understand it. And, and it really um, helped me develop, develop a relationship with Him. And, and the more I read about Jesus, the more I fell in love with Him. And, and this again, this concept to me was strange, but Christ in my heart was answering every question that I had about God. Up to this point, I was known as the craziest kid on the block. I mean, I was just doing some things I can't even tell you uh, that were just embarrassing and, and just brought shame to my family and uh, a lot of heartache. And it, and it was really for attention. So a lot of these things I was doing, I believe, was breaking God's heart. And how God changed my life, I mean, once I received Christ, the funny thing is, he changed my behavior, he changed the way I spoke to people, he changed the way I thought about people. Um, and I can't say it was an immediate change, it took me about six years to really grasp the idea and, and, and the truth about what he wants from me. And, and God was slowly ingraining and giving me a new identity, which is in Christ. So my behavior really changed a lot. Uh, and like I said, the funny thing was, no, no one taught me to stop smoking. No one taught me to stop using bad language. No one taught me to stop drinking. No one taught me to m stop mistreating women. No one taught me that. It just happened in my heart. No one could teach me that. And to me, that was a miracle. I mean, here I am desiring to do the right thing. And it's just coming from God himself. And, and like I said, the more I read about Jesus, the more I fell in love with him. And, and the more I realized how my flesh was fighting against him. And he gently just started to restore me, restore my life, restore my identity uh, in him. I mean, there's still a lot more changes to do, but you know, the main issues were being taken care of by God. And it's, it's only done by him. I had nothing to do with it. To my Muslim friend, you know, God loves you. And I'm only a person who, who really was desperate and I'm only a person who was starving who found food and here I am to share that food with you and, and, and that's it that's all I can really say about that is, is Jesus really gave my starving spirit that bread which he is he even called himself the bread of life and I feed on him now and it's not this earthly kind of feeding you might want to think but it's a spiritual kind of feeding because he's our lifeline and I'm just here to tell you that he loves you he loves you and, and he loves me and he loves us all just the same and, and I found treasure treasure more worth more than gold and rubies and whatever you can imagine and I'm here to give it to you for free because he gave it to me for free and it, it's something that we can never do to earn. You know, God loves us no matter what. We can't earn His love. Uh, he loves us regardless of who we are and what we've done against Him. Now, I know there's a verse in the Bible that says, because He lives, I will also live. And that was such an impact when I read that. I'm going to live someday again. You know, this body will deteriorate, this body will die. And, and if you're in a place where you're not sure, if you're in a place where you don't know where you're going to go when you die. Don't undermine what Jesus Christ can do for you. Don't just throw it aside and say, well, he can't because of your own selfish beliefs. Believe it because he said it. And he could change your life and he could change your heart if you allow him to. And you could know eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. And it's, it's a step of faith. And it's not faith in your faith. It's faith in him, the one true God. I want to thank Imra for sharing his story. I can relate to him a lot. Like Imra, I was born into a Muslim family in a Muslim country. 
And like him, my spiritual identity was challenged as well. And today, Imra and I both serve the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But what made the difference in Imra's life? You can see how he began uh, to interact with Christian friends. And actually, the issue was not how Imra reacted to his friends, but how he reacted to what his friends believed. If you remember, he began to get angry almost to the point of getting into a physical fight with his friend. Why did Imra get so angry? What is anger and where does it come from? How can we master anger before it masters us? When we think about anger, we often think about being angry with another person or a group of people. Sometimes it is easiest to become angry with those we are closest to, and those we trust the most. Sometimes it happens when we feel that they have let us down or disappointed us. Other times we get angry with people who disagree with our opinion or our religious values. This is basically the situation Imbra found himself in. But let's dig in a little deeper. Do you feel that sometimes you get angry at God? Or do you think that God gets angry with you? These are important questions to consider as they reveal a clear distinction between Islamic and Christian teachings. Every Muslim prays the prayer from the first surah of the Quran. It states in Surah Fatiha, Ayat 6 and 7, Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, those whose portion is not wrath and who go not astray. Here we see, according to the Quran, that God is angry with people and His wrath rests on them. The language in the Arabic text is very clear and unmistakable on this. In Islam, the wrath of God, the anger of Allah, rests upon people. This reveals the primary motivation why Muslims fast, pray, give charity, and go on pilgrimage. They want to do everything possible so that God will accept them. They don't want to have the anger of God come down upon them. Unfortunately, when I was a Muslim, I never knew if I had prayed enough, fasted enough, uh, done enough good things to earn Allah's favor. I never knew where I stood, just like you. But in the Bible, we see that God loves all of humanity. He may disapprove and he might be displeased with a certain behavior or sin. Yet he loves us continually. He puts no condition around his love for you and me. This is a major, major difference between Christianity and all the other religions. In Islam, God's wrath will fall upon you if you are not good enough and if you displease him. The Bible tells us that we are sinful and we have displeased God. And that puts us in a position opposing God. But how does the God of the Bible respond to this? From the Bible, the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 6 through 11. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. What makes this text so wonderful is that it communicates to us that uh, though we are all sinners and that sin makes us enemies of God, God, the God of the Bible, instead of condemning us, as Islam teaches, gives us the opportunity to be saved. God Himself came to rescue us and paid the penalty for our sins. He did all of this 
while we were still his enemies. As the verse 10 has stated in the passage we just read, if we feel God is angry with us, or if we are angry at God, we will eventually become a person who is angry with everyone. Uh, we need to deal with this because no matter how hard we try to suppress it, it will eventually come out. So how does a Muslim person deal with anger? The word Islam uh, means submission or surrender. You know this. Uh, it is a term that has two uh, applications, a military and a relational application. In the military sense, if one army conquers another army, uh, the defeated have to surrender and submit to the conquerors or face death. In Islam, God conquers you. The army that loses a war and becomes conquered is angry, but they can't fight back anymore. Uh, they've lost. I believe this is why many of us as Muslims experience so much anger in our personal lives and in our families. We were conquered by Allah and we resented it. This might not necessarily apply to you, but I know that it applies to so many people that are watching this program. In a relational application, in Islam, the man is considered superior to the woman. I'm not saying I believe this to be true, I'm just stating what Islam clearly teaches, that the man is superior to the woman. Therefore, according to the Quran, the woman must submit to the man. She has been conquered. If she does not submit, she may be punished. Would this make her happy or angry? What do you think? In the Bible, we see that anger is something we all have to deal with, and it can affect both men and women. The first step on the road to overcoming anger is to acknowledge that it exists in our own hearts. The Bible tells us that it is not a sin to be angry, but that we need to process our anger quickly and properly because it can lead to sins such as hatred, revenge, and even murder. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27 says, And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. Do you remember how Imrat dealt with his anger? First, he came to understand that he was angry, and he wisely began to try to get to the root of the problem. He asked God to help him deal with the issue. He came to understand that Muhammad and the Quran could not change his heart, but only Jesus could change his heart. He asked Jesus, if you are real, if you can truly change hearts, I want you to change my heart. And what happened? God replaced Imra's anger with the peace that can only come from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have this kind of peace in your life, could it be that you are angry? An angry spirit is not a peaceful spirit. I'm telling you these things not to judge you, but as a brother who loves you and wants to see God's best for your life. Imra made another wise decision on his journey to hope. He started reading the Bible. This began to transform his thinking and his behavior. He began to love the Lord Jesus more and more. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 tells us, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Remember, all of this is a process. We are all on a journey. We will deal with anger in our lives. But my hope is that we have helped you deal with anger on this program. Perhaps today you want to start your journey to hope by receiving the free gift of God's salvation. God came to earth in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ to save people from their sins, including the devastating effects of anger. 
let me appeal to you in the strongest way possible that there is no other way to get to heaven. Your sins are a roadblock to, to heaven and to your journey of hope. God has sent Jesus to pay the price for your sin. Let today be the day of salvation for you. Don't wait till tomorrow. You must turn away from your sin and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you do this, God will forgive your sins and give you a brand new heart. If you are ready to take this step, please say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I need a Savior. You are the Savior of the entire world. Come, come into my heart and cleanse me from my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I need you to be the master of my life. I ask you to lead me and guide me every day. The Bible tells us that the angels in heaven rejoice when a person gives his or her life to Jesus Christ. If you prayed this prayer, then the angels in heaven are rejoicing over you. We thank God for your decision and would like to help you begin your new life as a follower of Jesus Christ. Please uh, visit our website, MuslimJourneyToHope.com. Through our website, you can also email us any questions, thoughts, or concerns you may have. I thank God that you were able to join us today. This was no accident, but something that God of the Bible destined for today. I invite you to join us again next time as we hear from another friend who has started out on the Muslim journey to hope.